Hello, I'm Jana Entkim. I'm a vascular surgeon at Northwell Health, and in this micro learning, I will be discussing the management of hemodialysis access related hand ischemia, aka Steele syndrome. I have no relevant disclosure. In this micro learning, I will be discussing the incidence of HD access induced hand ischemia presentation and risk factors, strategies to prevent hand ischemia, as well as diagnosis and treatment options. The incidence of hand ischemia in patients with HD access ranges from under 1% in forearm fistula to over 5% in the antecubital base fistula to have both cephalic and basilic outflow. Onset of ischemia after AV graft placement is commonly occurs in acute phase within 30 days after surgery or subacute phase within a year of access placement, while ischemia after fistula placement is more likely to occur later after the access has been used for several years. Based on SVS guidelines, ischemia has been classified into four grades, ranging from no symptoms in grade zero ischemia to ischemic rest pain and tissue loss in grade three ischemia. Several risk factors have been identified, including advanced age, female sex, diabetes, PVD, large outflow conduit, multiple prior access procedures, prior episode of steel, and using brachial artery as inflow. There are several strategies to prevent arterial steel that should be considered during HD access planning and creation. First of all, perioperative testing to identify and potentially treat proximal arterial lesions should be done. Also, when creating antecubital based fistulas, ligation of deep perforating branches is recommended in order to perform selective venous arterialization of either cephalic or basilic vein instead of arterializing both. Also, try to minimize the use of brachial arteries inflow. Create radiocephalic fistulas in distal forearm when feasible, or use proximal radial artery for inflow instead of brachial artery when creating upper arm fistulas. It allows for adequate inflow while reducing risk of steel. And again, deep perforating branch can be used for anastomosis in this location or should be ligated. The use of tapered grafts to reduce the incidence of hand ischemia continues to be controversial. Some studies suggest that there may be advantage of tapered grafts, while others suggest that tapered grafts do not decrease risk of steel. The workup of accessing induced hand ischemia should include PPGs with and without fistula compression, as well as fistula duplex to measure volume flow and evaluate for the presence of flow reversal in their artery distal to the anastomosis. Not all steels are created equal. The first step in choosing the appropriate treatment for the patient is measuring the flow in the fistula. High flow fistulas with over one liter of flow can be treated with banding or rooting, while low flow access can be treated with drill or proximalization of arterial inflow. Radial artery ligation can be considered for any radiocephalic fistula irrespective of flow as long as the palmar arch is intact. In case of severe ischemia, especially if digital gangrene is present, ligation of HD access should be considered. When it comes to treatment option, Banding is the least invasive procedure and should be considered for high flow access. There are several banding techniques described in the literature with various adjuncts that allow for measurement of distal perfusion during the procedure. While banding is least invasive technique, it is associated with highest rate of failure to manage steel as well as the highest rate of access thrombosis. Revision using distal inflow is another treatment option for high flow access. It requires ligation of the fistula at the origin with re-establishing of more distal inflow. Lengthening the fistula increases the resistance and leads to decreased risk of hand ischemia. This technique preserves the native anterograde flow to the hand while putting fistula at risk. For low flow access, drill should be considered. Drill reliably restores anterograde flow and eliminates potential physiologic pathway for steel and maintains continuous dialysis access. However, it requires ligation of anterograde native arterial flow to the hand. It's been shown to be safe and effective procedure, and it continues to be a popular exam answer, but might not always be an applic applicable to patients in your practice. 
While drill might be the most effective procedure, there's reluctance to ligate normal arteries supplying the distal arm, which led to the development of alternative treatment options, including proximalization of arterial inflow. This technique does not sacrifice natural arterial continuity. Proximal arterial anastomosis increases flow to the forearm by increasing pressure at the split point between the distal circulation and the dialysis axis. It also initiates collateral flow at the higher point in the arm, which is advantageous to prevent or treat or, uh, ischemic symptoms in the hand. The study by uh, Gradman evaluated the effects of six axis modifications on the forearm flow and showed that proximalization approach drill in improving forearm flow and appeared to be as effective as drill. In summary, HT axis induced ischemia is rare but potentially devastating complication. Various strategies to decrease incidence of steel should be considered during planning and creation of HD axis. Treatment strategy should be determined based on severity of symptoms and flow in the HD axis. Overall, bending is least invasive procedure, but it is associated with high failure rates. While drill is considered to be a gold standard for managing steel in the setting of low flow, proximalization of inflow may be as effective without sacrificing natural arterial continuity. HD axis ligation should be considered in patients with severe symptoms. Thank you.